in order to be able to achieve prosperity for our citizens who expect education, healthcare, and opportunities for trading. We, the majority of our countries, also depend on tourism. What happens when your tourists come? What happens when your investors want to build hotels? This is the most nonsensical thing that we have seen in public policy. And why do we say that we are at risk of offending a human right and a global public good? Every citizen, every citizen of the world ought to have the right to be able to have a bank account if they are to walk the streets without fear of crime, if they are to have the opportunity to save, if they are to have the opportunity to do as the capitalist system tells us we should do, to leverage our savings to be able to invest in order to grow our economy and to increase our wealth. And every country in the world ought to be able to have access to affordable banking services to fuel trade and to foster and enable remittances and in this entirely globalized world that has come out of the bottle and can't go back in, there's no chance of putting the genie back in the bottle. What we do is force countries to find alternative means to trade. Now, the SWIFT system, sounds familiar, why? In this committee, I'm sure you've had a lot of discussion about who should be excluded from the SWIFT banking system in this year. And we know that the attempts to keep Russia out through sanctions as you've done with other countries, simply has treated them as pariahs, but they have found ways to trade outside of the SWIFT banking system too. And the reality also is that if you don't use this example to show you why this is an appropriate time to take different action, we will continue the injustice. And what do I mean by that? Russia didn't choose the Caribbean to hide its money. Russians didn't choose the Caribbean to hide its money. They chose the metropoles. They chose London and New York and Switzerland and Luxembourg. And you only have to do as Tom Cruise told us in that famous movie, follow the money, follow the money. Where has the money gone? It hasn't come to the Caribbean. And what we have is listings from the Financial Action Task Force that are perhaps well-intentioned, but are focused on process and form and are not focused on substantive prosecution of money laundering. That is the equivalent of saying that I'm more interested in whether you adhere to rules than in finding where the money launderers are. When you wanted to find the money launderers with respect to Russia, you didn't come to the Caribbean. You went to London, you went to New York, you went to Zurich, you went to Luxembourg. And I say this because there has to be a fundamental injustice in a system that puts on a list, not Luxembourg, not the United States of America, not the United Kingdom, but puts Jamaica, Trinidad, Ghana, Barbados, all of which were put on a list, not even because we were having substantive money laundering there, but because in 2020, there was a determination to change the criteria by which we assess countries, looking at the definition of money supply from M2 to M3. Now, for most of my constituents, that sounds as though we're playing a game. But that reality of changing the definition of money supply led to the listing of our countries. And what did it mean? An investor wanting to come to Barbados from Europe goes into a bank and says, I want to transfer X million dollars for an investment. The bank says, oh, Barbados, no, we have to do enhanced due diligence because they're on a list. Oh, Belize, we have to do enhanced due diligence. When that happens, they say, but guess what? The enhanced due diligence is too costly for us. You need to go and find another bank. It doesn't only happen with the risking of institutions. It also happens with categories of business. So you have bankers saying to people who trade gold, oh, you can't bank with us anymore. Come for your millions of dollars. Where are they going to carry it? How does that enhance the opportunities for crime? How does that enhance human insecurity? People who trade in casinos, do you believe that the owners of casinos in Las Vegas keep their money in a safe or do they keep it in a bank? Well, in the Caribbean and Trinidad where the casinos and in the rest of us, they tell the people who have casinos and slot machines, you can't bank in a bank anymore in spite of the fact that we still have correspondent banking relationships. Why? Because to keep the remaining relationships that we have, they go overboard with the level of compliance and regulatory compliance that make us now as countries 
uncompetitive and make the conduct of certain businesses prohibitive. This can't be fair. And if it is not fair for your people to be excluded financially, then we say equally it is not fair for their family in the islands and in the other countries from which they come to be excluded financially. This is a global public good that we must protect, and this is a human right that we must protect. And I want to thank this committee for seeing us today, for hearing us, and for feeling us, because for too often we have not done so. The last point I'll make is this. Do not let this be recorded as an act of unconscious bias. And why do I say so? Look at the list of countries who are listed, and you see that they're almost all former colonies and people of color. And look at the countries who, in spite of being able to open a bank account within hours in Delaware or Wyoming, within hours in Luxembourg or Zurich, and they remain off of these lists that speak about the risk to money laundering, and look and see where the divide comes. I believe that this committee has a keen eye for fairness and equity. And all we ask today is for a level playing field. The final solution we believe, one of the solutions we leave you with, is that the Treasury ought to be truthful to its mandate. It says that it wants to be risk sensitive. Well, if it wants to be risk sensitive, then it needs to focus on where the money is, rather than creating rules that act as a proxy to money laundering or terrorism financing. And it has found the answer, even if fortuitously or serendipitously this year, by following the money with the Russian sanctions. I thank you and pray that we can use both technology, communication, sharing of information, but above all else, fairness and transparency to <coughs> ensure that our people are not further punished from being able to participate in their lives, through their economies, through their savings, and with their families across borders and business. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Prime Minister Motley.